Welcome back. The Super Bowl is fast approaching, and uh, with us now is a gentleman who played for both the Seattle Seahawks, started his NFL career there, ended it with the New England Patriots, a Connecticut native, Nico Kudavides, who uh, just finished up playing recently. What are you doing to kill some time now? Uh, right now, um, my brother, who is my partner, we started a development company. Uh, we're building apartments. We have one under construction in West Hartford, Connecticut, and uh, that's been keeping me very busy. So uh, we've started our platform probably a year and a half now, and uh, we're under construction. So it's uh, it's a it's a busy day-to-day -day deal. Plus, I have uh, my wife and three little boys at home, <laughs> five, three, and two, and. Yeah, how you there, doing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's no, there's no moment of the day where I could sit and say, you know what, I'm bored. Yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds like you made the tr transition rather easily from pro football to to the next life. But do, do you miss the game a bit? I would assume. Yeah. Look, I miss the locker room a lot. Mm -hmm. um, playoffs, you start to miss a lot because yeah. um, you know th there was always an opportunity or a chance to go to a Super Bowl. I played in two. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't win either of them at the time. Uh, but look, the, the hardest thing for any professional athlete, whether it's basketball, football, baseball, is transition. Mm -hmm. um, you hear a lot of stories, a lot of guys that, you know, um, can't really make that transition, and they're pretty sad stories. Mm -hmm. So I've been pretty fortunate enough, and um, I was able to, to be very proactive during my time in the NFL to kind of set myself up with what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, I got some exposure and did some internships and job shadowing, which really helped me and uh, kind of catapulted into my second career, which has been good because if you're at home and uh, you don't know what you want to do, it's, it could get very frustrating and tough. Um, you know, the checks aren't coming in anymore, and, right. you know, that's where a lot of guys struggle. Well, nearly 10 years in the NFL. Uh, talk about this matchup uh, on Sunday, Seahawks, Patriots. Uh, kind of intriguing to you? Yeah, I mean, it, it's very intriguing to myself because people ask me, I played for four teams in the NFL, and they ask me, you know, what, where, where did you have the most fun or what were the best times? Mm -hmm. And I always say, look, uh, the best times are always when you're most successful. And Seattle, I played four years, mm -hmm. went to a bunch of playoff games, and went to a Super Bowl. Right. New England, played there, you know, almost three years, went to a lot of playoff games, right. went to a Super Bowl. So those two teams are the teams that, you know, I had the most fun. We were the most successful. I've, I've you know, the relationships and bonds you create at, at, on those teams were, you know, they last a lifetime. And obviously the memories. Um, but, you know, since I've been a year, basically I got released in the beginning of last season, um, you know, a lot of the people that I talk to on a regular basis and now are mostly with the Patriots. Mm -hmm. Um, Seattle's got a whole different coaching regime. Right. I don't think there, there's not one player left on that team from that Super Bowl that I went to. So the connections there um, aren't as close as they are here in New England. You talk about the relationships. A lot of people only see one side of Bill Belichick. You know, the one word answer, very, you know, uh, just blah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But you love playing for him. Right? Oh, I, absolutely. I mean, look, as far as learning the game of football, um, it's, it doesn't get any better than that. Uh, the guy is brilliant. Um, he's always studying film. He's always advancing his knowledge on the game. He's, his defensive schemes are just amazing. Um, you know, and he, ha he has a funny side to him. Yeah. Um, you know, but look, at the end of the day, it's, it's all about work. Yeah. He's demanding. Um, and going in as a veteran, it's definitely a, a lot easier, I would say, than going in as a rookie yeah. because you have already earned the respect and he understands that you, you're coming in as a mature player. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I can only say great things about him. All right. Uh, I know it's been beaten to death. I mean, I'm kind of tired of talking about it. But this whole deflate gate, which the name alone kind of annoys me, but <laughs> do softer footballs matter in football? Uh, I per I, look, I'm a defensive player, so there's not much I know about the footballs other than I need it in my hand, so right. I could give it back to Tom. Right. Um, uh, but I, it's, it's just been crazy. It's, uh, the unfortunate thing is, look, these guys who, you know, I personally know have done, accomplished something that's great, mm -hmm. and they're, you know, what, three, four days away from being world champions if they win that game, and, you know, we're still sitting here talking about these footballs. Mm -hmm. I wish the focus would be more on them, their kind of personal stories and how they've overcome things and how they're, you know, really close to possibly being a champion. Mm -hmm. And uh, let the NFL just do their investigation um, and, let, and let them do what they have to do. I just wish, you know, the media just wouldn't take it and, and just create such a big hoopla over it because right. it really takes away from the game itself. 
when, when you look at what has happened in New England, you know, this whole dynasty started with, with the Spygate thing. You know, I don't know when it will end, and if it ends this way, people are going to look at them as cheaters. What, what, what do you say to that? Look, at the end of the day, if, if they win the game, I mean, they have a, they have a Super Bowl, they're champions. Yeah. What everybody else say is just outside noise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the, everybody talks about a fraternity in the locker room, and that's what it is. I mean, it's a bunch of men who basically spend timeless hours together. Um, they beat the heck out of each other. And they go through something that a lot of people on the outside just don't understand. So at the end of the day, if you really accomplish and you're a world champion, mm -hmm. um, all that outside noise isn't really a huge concern. All right, this time goes by like that. So before I let you go, I cannot let you leave here without picking a winner. I think I have an idea who you think is going to win this game Sunday, but uh, who are you going with? Uh, I, I got to go with the Patriots. I mean, as much as I love the 12th man and yeah. all the, 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 I mean, Coffee by far the, the greatest loudest stadium I've ever played in in Seattle um, but I got to go with New England uh, those are my guys um, I still talk to a lot of those guys I see those guys all the time um, you know it's been a while since they've won one and uh, I hope to go out there and, and, and play their best game of the year and, and come out victorious all right Nico thanks for coming in no problem